Hello dramas and other creatures. In this video, I'm gonna address the possibly thorny topic of how to play a double stroke role. This is following a comment on one of my videos recently, not, not that the video is about this topic, but somebody paid a nice compliment, but also mentioned the fact that he was feeling very frustrated trying to learn how to play double strokes and described a scenario where he was talking to another drummer who was some years his senior um, and asked the chap how to play double strokes and the guy went oh it's easy you just bounce the sticks and did the little or whatever he might have done and there you go and and obviously the person asking me the question about this felt very frustrated I believe there even might have been a bit of an altercation over the topic and you know understandably if someone just shows you the end result it's not that easy to discern what's going on you need to think about how to approach the topic in a slightly more sort of broken down way bit by bit one step at a time so I'm going to try and explain this to you here today hopefully I'll give the chap something to uh, work on or or whatever and then you know maybe this will help other people as well um, of course let me know what you think about this in the comments I appreciate your feedback on how I presented this idea whether you feel like you understood it um, and just you know whether you think this is a load of rubbish or not I don't know it's up to you anyway I'm going to demonstrate what's known as a two for one stroke it's known to me as a two for one stroke anyway I don't know if anyone else calls it that um, gentleman by the name of Murray Spivak is a very legendary drum teacher from the olden days uh, taught this and called it a single stroke rebound and I learned how to do it off his video after many years my double strokes were terrible and I don't know if they're much better now but I've been working on it quite seriously and in, in Spivak's video his whole approach to the stick holding technique and playing and so on he's he's demonstrating with the aid of uh, Louis Belson a uh, Dave Garibaldi appears later on in the video as well, who are both students of uh, Spivak. And then um, after watching this video, I tried to work out, you know, it's very difficult learning how to do things from videos as you're about to discover. Um, but um, after I watched that, that DVD of Mavi Spivak, the DVD, remember those? After I watched that a load of times, I then discovered there was a Chad Wackerman series on Drum Channel where he goes through uh, his, his experience studying with Murray Spivak as well. And, um, you know, including the whole uh, two for one thing or single stroke rebound, as Murray Spivak called it. Um, I, there's also a great teacher called, um, oh blimey, what's his name? Chuck Silverman, who's again, a fantastic teacher, very sadly no longer with us. Um, and, and he taught the Spivak approach as well. So I've kind of amalgamated what I could understand by watching the videos about this. And now I'm going to present you with the way I do it. If this looks interesting and works for you, that's great. If you think I'm committing some sort of awful heresy, please feel free to let me know in the comments. It's all helpful, all helps the cause. Anyway, so let's take a look at what we're going to do. How to play a double stroke roll. Ta-da! No, not really. Okay, let's take it slowly. As I said, we're going to move the hand once and produce two sounds. And oh, another aside, lots of people tell you you have to pump the fingers and all this sort of stuff to make it sound even and it doesn't bounce evenly and there's not enough energy and so on and so on and there are pros and cons to everything this approach works really well for me um i, I can do a bit of finger pumping but it's not absolutely necessary having said that if you're interested in finger pumping go ahead pump those fingers baby but um, i'm just showing you how to get the two strokes from one movement of the hand now am i talking too much again so how i hold the stick i'm going to show you how i hold the stick if you hold your stick in some other way i invite you to sort of extrapolate as best you can how to apply this methodology you don't have to hold the stick the same way as i am if you have some fundamental problems with how you hold your stick um, i invite you to get in touch with me and i can give you my take on the topic um, Otherwise, try and adapt to the way you hold the stick. And I, I might be able to demonstrate a couple of alternatives, but I'm gonna focus on, on what I sort of know and, and teach. First things first, I grip the stick with the thumb and index finger, and then I wrap the middle finger around the stick. And essentially, this is where most of the business happens. And the other two fingers, my ring finger and pinky, are just gonna relax around the stick. Now, I'm holding my stick so that the stick lines up with this little dip that you've got in the, or well, I've got, we've all got in the palm, right? And so the intention is that I'm holding my stick so there's a straight line from the elbow all the way up to the tip of the stick, okay? Is that in the camera even? Maybe that's out of the picture, right? 
straight line from the elbow down to the end of the stick, right? And so when I sit and I want to aim my sticks at the center of the drum, my elbows come a little bit out to the side like this, and I have a, a nice efficient transfer of energy apparently all the way down my arm. And so that's the way I do it. Now my middle finger, and this is the thing that I, I discovered trying to figure out what Spivak was talking about and then uh, Chad Wackerman, I realized middle finger acts as a kind of spring. So the energy for the second stroke comes from my middle finger, which is cautiously, I would say, has a certain bit of tension in it. So my thumb and index finger holding the stick just firmly enough so it doesn't fall to the ground. And then the middle finger kind of gets around it and there's a little bit of tension there, okay? Now, you're gonna to have to experiment and try and figure out what I'm talking about there. Um, this is one of the benefits of a teacher, I guess, because you, you, in this video scenario, you're not gonna get the feedback. Um, but, so, but, you know, you can work this out for yourself, on, you know, right? But then there's that. And the way I'm holding the stick, there's that little bit of a, a wobble there, okay? Now, the thing I'm going to do is, throw the stick down at the pad. I'm not taking it from a huge height. I'm not putting a huge amount of energy into it. It's more or less just the gravity that pulls my hand and the stick down with it. Maybe a little bit of extra muscle, not much. These two fingers, the, f the ring finger and index finger, aren't really engaged in the process. They're just relaxed there. You don't want them sticking out like that, but they don't need to be touching the stick. If they stick out like that, you're creating a lot of tension. Okay, that's the two for one. Now, wait a moment, you're doing the same thing as that bloke was complaining about. Here, just go for it. Yes and no. It's one of those things, a bit like riding a bike. You've got to try it until it comes out. But I'm gonna try and break it down a little bit for you. Now, the first thing I think almost everybody I've taught this to finds challenging at first is resisting the urge to move the hand twice to play two discrete strokes. So the first thing we wanna do is just try and drop the stick down without worrying too much about the sound and not let the hand move and power the stick for the second stroke, right? So, you know, a lot of people starting this will be doing this, right? There's that extra move. And it's you're watching a knuckle, right? If, if this knuckle, the knuckle of the forefinger, index finger, whatever, if that moves twice, you can, that's the way to tell. Okay, I moved that twice. Now I'm doing it right. Okay, again, these fingers relax, but not doing very much. Index finger, holding with the thumb, middle finger's a bit springy, it's like a spring. If I put too much energy into it, I do get quite an uneven stroke and then you get that starting the car on a cold morning effect. Yeah, don't do that. You're just trying to find comfortable balance so that the sticks or the, sorry, the two strokes are happening as evenly as possible. Now, it might take a very, very long time to get the hang of this. You're not going to sit down and have this all happen in two minutes. Or, no, you might, but, you know, you're lucky if it does. Otherwise, just be very patient. Okay? Now, if you're trying to do that with only one movement of the hand and you feel that your hand really wants to put two movements into it, and you can't resist it, then a thing to do is just to try and really open up your hand, relax a lot, and let the stick bounce freely without worrying about the interval between the two strokes, or the two notes rather, I should say. It's one stroke. And sit there patiently and do this so that even if you give quite a big bounce to the stick, all you're going to do is then let the second stroke occur on its own. Resist the temptation to do anything at all with your hand after that first movement. And this way you're sort of training your brain to accept the idea that the hand is gonna move once and that's it and then it's rested. Well, until the next one. So I'm holding very loosely the middle finger isn't 
isn't providing that springiness really, but the stick is pivoting over my middle finger. I hope you can see that. I don't know. I was sort of thinking about should I do two cameras, but it's late in the evening now. And I just want to get on with it. And do that with your left hand and your right hand. Try and really let the stick bounce and then fall back onto the pad. One stroke and then the hand just lets the stick flop down. Okay, when it goes down, you can just catch it with your pinky and ring finger no energy, no effort involved. We're not pumping, just the, the fingers coming to rest. Okay, now you can do that and alternate once you feel like you've got the hang of it. Once you've established that your hand's happy to, to move once and then allow the stick to produce two sounds, you can go back to trying to just do this. When I'm teaching it, we usually go back and forth a bit between just going for that da-da, da-da, where you're like, that's it, that's your stroke. And then again, doing the big open bounce. Okay, move back and forth between those two. Now. Once you've got this happening, make sure you leave a gap. Notice that I'm playing, I'm giving myself a bit of time to breathe. Your brain really wants to go, ooh, look, there we go. Ooh. Watch your hand really carefully. Mm. This is what you're aiming for. Okay. And do it one hand at a time. As much as you can, just use the hand itself, pivoting there. Okay, and once you think that's sort of starting to sound quite decent, you can start to alternate between the two hands. Now this is it. This is your two for one doubles. All you need to do now is close the gap between the right hand and the left hand, or the left hand and the right hand if you're that way inclined. Okay, so gradually I'm gonna close the gap. I'm not changing anything about the, the double stroke itself. I'm trying to keep relaxed, moving my hands. I'm trying not to let my forearms do anything like that. Just the hands, as much as I can anyway. And then I bring it together. Okay, now when you first do that, if you've never done it before, that's gonna either just like become, it's just gonna be crap basically, let's face it. When you first do this, it's not gonna be very good, but that doesn't matter because by engaging with the process, your brain will start putting together all the little wires it needs to get the coordination of your muscles and your hands and so on and so on uh, to work properly, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna every day sit down and you're gonna start off just trying to produce this thing one hand at a time, okay? really pay attention to how that feels there and how the middle finger can help act as a spring and notice if these fingers start sticking out like that that's going to get in the way so just let them relax they don't need to touch the stick let them relax focus on one hand at a time and you know I don't know you so you know does your head want to sit and do this for five minutes or ten minutes each don't know do you want to do it for one minute each hand don't know, try and do it 
just regularly and consistently every day. Try and pay attention to the process. If you feel like your hand is tense, if you feel like you can't resist the temptation to play two discrete movements of the hand, two discrete strokes, come back to this. I still do this regularly, trying to get my hand to really understand. It only needs to move once to produce two sounds. Okay, and then again, you're back to here. Be patient, very gradually, and then close the gap. Until it sounds like a nice smooth roll, whatever is the best you can do. Practice pads are so critical, aren't they? Okay, and that's it. Keep doing that, and eventually you'll be able to produce a nice, at least smooth enough double stroke roll. From there, maybe we'll look at some exercises you can do that will help you make this applicable to a drum set situation. But I think that will do for covering this topic for now. I very much hope the original guy watches this and lets me know what he thinks about it. But whatever random person has bumped into this video and watched, if you're still here, let me know what you thought. Is this a good way for you to learn how to play double strokes. Go away and try it if it's interesting. Let me know what you think. That would be the end of that. I think it's time for you to go off and practice.